Okay, um, good evening everyone. Welcome to the Humans Weekly Meeting, which tonight is uh, um, kind of a turning point, I think, on the preparation of our, of our Congress. And uh, this meeting tonight is very important because the roots of humans uh, and the future of humans in Warsaw are really connected together. Um, as you have seen from the brief note that I shared before the meeting, um, the last few days had been impacted by the decisions of the Italian Constitutional Court on the two referendum that were um, campaigned on over the summer, the one for the legalization of euthanasia and the one for the uh, legalization of cannabis, or I mean, to change it, the rule around cannabis. And um, as we have discussed in the previous meetings, uh, uh, these uh, two topics would have been the pillars of our Congress in Warsaw from a political proposal perspective. Um, however, what happened with the decision of the Constitutional Court, I think, uh, impose us an acceleration and a um, upgrade of how we're gonna work in the next couple of weeks towards the Congress in Warsaw. Uh, because uh, um, I think the element of rule of law and democracy becomes quite interesting also for the Italian uh, uh, situation. And the fact that the Congress mainly, which now has all 50 people registered, 10 of which Polish citizens um, is gonna configure it more as a exchange between peers and not very much as Italians or other Europeans going to Warsaw to, to comment the political situation of Poland. So I think the, in my opinion, the purpose of tonight's meeting is to discuss what happened in Italy together with Marco uh, and how we can uh, really use the Humans in Warsaw Congress as a political opportunity uh, to really move from the theoretical idea of humans, uh, citizens for freedom, democracy, and sustainability into something that is very much and very uh, significantly um, urgent. Um, so a couple of ideas that I had in mind uh, that I want to put on the table is how we can in the next weeks uh, use more uh, the, the initiatives of Associazione Luca Coscioni and the figure of Marco himself to call for the Congress and to call for the Polish activists uh, to join the Congress, but also how we should work both in Italian and in English uh, to explain why now the European Living Will proposal and the European Citizen Initiative on Cannabis are politically relevant. Uh, on the first, on the European Living Will, I'm happy to confirm that we had the confirmation of their presence in Warsaw of at least three of the end of life decisions groups in Europe, the World Federation for the Right to Die, uh, Erika Priesting, which is the who is a doctor in Switzerland, who is actually also a civil disobedient in herself, and uh, a representative of Dignitas. Whilst on the European Citizen Initiative next Monday, we will have a meeting with over 30 activists from different EU member states that represent different organizations that are ready to constitute the committee for the launch of the European Citizen Initiative. And this is quite important because we are in the position to have a committee for the initiative that represents the level of initiative in different EU member states. Um, from Malta where cannabis was legalized for recreative purposes only a few weeks ago, uh, to Germany where there is an agreement from a government perspective on this matter, to Italy where the referendum was blocked by the Constitutional Court. So I think in this light tonight, we really should try to have a, a debate that starts from the Italian situation and help us to think how to transform and accelerate the preparation of the Congress, identifying the priorities uh, of action and how we use 
our own history <laughs> to, to make the Congress um, a significant uh, opportunity uh, for the next weeks and months. So I leave the floor to Marco also because I guess this is his very own, very public <laughs> meeting after the latest. So maybe. Yes. Uh, thank you. Thank you, Virginia. Well, um, uh, thank you very much to all. Even if uh, uh, it's in fact uh, very important for uh, our organization and uh, also for uh, Italian people, what just happened in Italy uh, with the. the uh, rejection of the possibility of voting the two referendum on end of life decision and on cannabis. Uh, I think that um, uh, we should stick to our our program in a way um, on the idea of uh, activating uh, participation at the European level for the enforcement of uh, democracy and uh, the rule of law. Um, of course, we will try to figure out if uh, there are some uh, um, international element that could be uh, relevant from this decision on the Constitutional Court. Um, but at the same time, uh, we are trying to build something new at the European level. So we have to put our energy um, as a priority on that. Um, I think that uh, uh, even the uh, even the appointment of the Sunday with the demonstration for the um, citizen assemblies uh, that we will uh, try to organize in Warsaw if we find uh, the possibility of do it logistically speaking. Um, this could be a, a, a hook uh, in order to. Uh, in order to present us to the Polish people, uh, I don't know, in front of universities or um, kind of like uh, stuff like this, in order to involve, uh, involve them on uh, this uh, idea of innovation of democracy. So um, I don't have much uh, to add now because I, in these days I was not uh, paying too much attention to the evolution of the program and so on. But I think that uh, from tomorrow on, uh, we have to try to uh, explain our project uh, to a published public, first of all, um, in order to have uh, uh, a stronger, uh, um, Polish citizens' participation and attendance uh, in our Congress in uh, Warsaw. I think that this is uh, uh, very is very important. Uh, at the Italian level, um, I will try to explain and I will try to explain how um, European civic participation could, in a way, be one of the tools to compensate the democratic crisis in Italy, but uh, um, we will work on that and then maybe uh, I will come out with something with uh, more and more precise. Thank you. Thank you, Marco. Um, Miriam. Ciao a tutti. Allora, uh, you, I, I Hello. If, uh, I can. Okay, thank you very much. Um, allora, eh, sono molto con che okay, che... so I agree with what Marcus said, because we should push on alternative instruments of participation. This is the right time. I am saying this because in this moment, I think that Italian activists are really active on this because uh, those who um, wrote to me said that they were really disappointed towards institutions and they, they understood the point, the fact that in Italy, democracy is obstacled at every level because these people, let's not forget this, uh, these people have uh, overcome any possible obstacle to reach the referendum from the small um, city to certifications. They activated like that. They never 
did activism and they and they have overcome any difficulty they reached the point and then they have this obstacle which is the constitutional court so they had the representation of the fact that democracy is obstacled at any level in Italy. So I think this is um, an important moment to propose new instruments of participation. Okay, I'm done. And I would like to say that Marco did a really good job at the press conference because you were a lion. Thank you so much. Um, I think, sorry, tonight I will try also to transform uh, intervention into actions because we only have three weeks left. Um, maybe something that will be helpful is uh, on one side to offer the opportunity to these activists to try and join and be in Warsaw with us. The flights are still very cheap and uh, maybe it's also a way to feel warmer in this moment uh, and secondly maybe also if you want to write something in italian that we can transform in english as an article for the blog on why for an activist for a citizens new forms of participation can be something to discuss i think it can help to uh, also tell outside of us the stories of how we're building up the congress and that is exactly is not a conference but a congress it's uh, an important uh, difference um so thank you miriam uh i see roberto mancuso and then marco giuseppe toma and then katia roberto Grazie, Virginia, parlerò... thank you virginia i will speak in italian well, I have to say that we couldn't have foreseen what uh, the decision of the Italian Constitutional Court uh, would have been, but unfortunately, we hoped as a popular movement uh, with millions of uh, of signatures, this could uh, we hope that this could overcome the obstacles of the constitutional court, but this didn't happen beyond the observation of Giuliano Amato, the president of the constitutional court during a press conference. I don't know whether uh, other presidents uh, of a constitutional court has, have, have, have ever had an, uh, a press conference after the decision, but uh, the behavior of Giuliano Amato was uh, incredible because um, Marco said it. It was uh, clear how Giuliano Amato said that um, uh, we had um, uh, that he made fools of the Italian people, and this is worrisome because about the uh, block of the two referendums, especially on the um, cannabis referendum. Well, he showed that he didn't read the, um, the proposal. So uh, the constitutional court is uh, the expression of a political uh, view. And this shouldn't be done by the constitutional court. There's a judicial system, but there are only two cases, three cases for blocking referendums. And this was not the case. So saying that a referendum uh, um, was uh, like we were uh, making fools of the Italian people is really serious and it is worrisome. It seems like a joke. 
Yesterday, I was uh, talking with some friends. Uh, I have involved them uh, in this initiative during this summer, and they asked me, what should we do? They are making fools of us. Well, there are a um, few options. So maybe we could fight uh, with uh, uh, civic uh, disobedience actions uh, or we will be uh, partisans, but we are non-violent and we believe in non-violence and in uh, civic disobedience. This is what we have right now. But beyond these uh, reflections, I would like to underline that what happened during these mon months is really relevant because it has shown how much uh, we have uh, grown all together and all the victories um, we have gained. The, um, the most important one is uh, the digital signature. So we should start starting a package of referendums, a package of referendums to um, bring to bring before the Constitutional Court, uh, I am referring to 2024, punctual and precise uh, referendums to win against this regime because uh, 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 politics is controlling everything. Political parties are everywhere, they are controlling everything. And we vote only when they want on what they want, with the information that they want, and with the disinformation, the distraction of the public opinion. So from this point of view, what should we do? Well, what we already have, we've already done that. The occasion of the Congress in Warsaw is great to launch two initiatives, one on the European Living Will and the one on the legalization of cannabis. This has to be launched on an European level and uh, we should reach a consensus, consensus of that citizens' movement, which uh, was activated all along without an experience of uh, bureaucracy. And uh, these activists collected signatures uh, during summer. It was very hot. So from one side, by thinking about uh, 2024, and on the other side, uh, thinking about uh, the European uh, level, we should go on, we should uh, uh, keep working on this. We should strike the iron while it's hot. You can say that democracy has lost democracy is still losing with this decision of the Italian Constitutional Court. And we should amplify all of this. And I think that the two topics, the legalization of euthanasia and the legalization of cannabis should, be, should still be at the center of the Congress of Humans and of the section of the rule of law. Is, we have collected more than 2 million signatures and then Giuliano Amato made fool of us with his arrogance. We had to listen to his words. I am really angry at his press conference. These were the things that I wanted to share with you. And... That's it, I'm ready to listen to all of you. Uh, I would like to take a couple of points of what you said, again, to try to practicalize them. Uh, I think the element of the rule of law and democracy applied to the output 
of participatory democratic uh, democratic processes is quite important so what happens uh, the power of initiative we always said uh, uh, no, the knowledge, the right to knowledge, the information is a key element. But I think on the other side is how, and this is an, an analogy with Poland, how the constitutional court uh, operates and the, the role of the judges in the political processes. Uh, it's another angle that we need to take into account in the session on democracy and rule of law, um, as well as the, the role of information. I think, again, if there was more information around, around the referendum in Italy, probably we would have different uh, situations. Of course, it's very difficult to not have our Congress on the Italian case or on the Polish case. This was always our objective. So I think the effort that we need to do in these weeks is to try and draw the lines and identify the fundamental elements that are common for the European uh, citizens. Uh, Marco Toma, and then Katia Garone, Sibilla Barbieri, and Lorenzo Mineo. Mi sentite? Vai Marco, yes. Can you hear me? I'll be talking in Italian. So, I'll, and I'll be quick. I would like to say something. I am very angry. The Constitutional Court is something akin to the Arab Spring. And this is not an isolated case. Let's think about what Minister Cingolani did. He was called by a child who was in, in a hunger strike and, and she was having visions. Italy and humans must fight for democracy. But right now, Italy is slipping into a situation that's like Latin America before the coup. I have a suspicion that if Amato had known that those referendums would have been lost, would not have succeeded, then he might have approved them. In 2024, there will be elections, supposedly there will be elections, and our situation is similar to Poland, and humans should do something about it. It's not just the constitutional court. All sorts of things have been happening. You should check Telegram channels. What we must, we must make sure that this prophecy does not come to pass. The prophecy that in 2100, they will remember the early to the 20s as the years when people forgot what democracy was. We must not let this come to pass. My only comment for what happened in Italy, that is, I'm shocked. As you know, I've been abroad for 10 years and uh, I always defend my country and then I come back and I found out the situation. So for me it was kind of a trauma. Uh, but my question for you and for Marco is this one. So um, when I hold the assembly for the, um, Cellula Cushion in Bologna, we discussed before the decision what we could do um, if, you know, uh, if the referendum was not going to happen. And of course, the first thing that I say is we should go to a higher level. So we should go to a European level. And now one of the, um, you know, the attendees that tells, it's a, a lawyer, he asked me how this would be possible, how we could implement something at European level and then to Italy. So, you know, I um, uh, referred them to the famous letter between Marco and Sophie Hinterveld. So I referred them to the, um, uh, the European Court for Human Rights, but perhaps we, know we should, uh, I mean, at least me, I, I need more information about this because I asked them to join the, the meeting and uh, I, I definitely want to give more information about how we can act and how this could be possible uh, in the future. Thank you, Katia. Uh, I don't know if Marco wants to react on this. 
Maybe you have uh, more um, updates about uh, what we are doing uh, on the European Living Will. Yes. Uh, yes. To, so the, the proposal of the European Living Will is uh, the output that we elaborated on how to start to build up political European network on end of life decisions, uh, which ultimately has the goal that you, Katia, just described. Um, of course, it's not the legalization of euthanasia in the, in the European Union, uh, but it's a strong and uh, achievable goal that we can try to pursue with other partners at a European Union level. And, uh, and so that's why the session during the Congress on this purpose and also the evaluation, if this can become potentially a European citizen initiative uh, is quite important. Uh, and it's one of the pillars to build exactly what you Kat Katia just described, to start to have a, a direct action based on participatory democracy on the topic of end of life decisions. And that was the more, um, not easy, but uh, accessible goal where there is a bit of consensus among different partners and organizations. So that's why that was identified as uh, the first uh, Trojan horse, let's call it in this way, uh, on this matter, using existing rights and trying to leverage them based on the idea of the European citizenship and the portability of, uh, of civil rights. Um, so this is uh, the quick reply to your, to your question. Um, of course, because we need the people to then try to imagine even more complex initiatives. So we need an initiative to start to build the, the network. Um, okay, Sibilla Barbieri, Lorenzo Mineo, Gabriele Lucia. Buonasera. Good evening. First of all, thank you, Marco, for the press conference, Marco, Filomena, and all the participants, because even I had a very hard time understanding just how wrong the other party had acted. And that was very clear in the press conference. I'm not sure how much the people understand this, but it's very important to to repeat how out of place it was for the president to, to do that for, because the hearing was about the admissibility of the referendum. I feel like this referendum was one last effort in the absence of other tools, there are popular initiatives that have not been taken into account for years and years. And this frustration has led to this. We were working with incomplete tools with this referendum to repeal or to modify this law. And we couldn't really create a new law. So there was a, a flaw in the tool from the very start. And this law is something that the people want. This law and other laws from other initiatives, the will of the people is very clear. We collected all these signatures and as Roberto said, we also had uh, digital signatures, but if we had had more time, we would have collected many, many more signatures. So I have some quite radical questions to ask. I know that we are a movement, a movement that is not tied to any one party. But it is my belief that we must have 
some time with parties. On the one hand, Marco is becoming a kind of uh, a figure that can that can be um, contacted by anybody from any party. This movement can be contacted by any party, but I believe perhaps we should take into account maybe entering politics. I know that this is tied with many compromise, with a lot of compromise, but I've been asking myself whether we can create a new political force that operates under a different logic. We need credible candidates. And I believe that Marco is reaching this status. And we then need to ask ourselves how to channel this energy, how to create this set of referendums to strengthen direct democracy. That's a, that's a great idea. But the two things are not, um, one does not exclude the other. We could have a government that is in favor of direct democracy, direct actions from the citizens. We've always wanted a politician that understands different types of democracy and who has this kind of answer to the democracy crisis. The idea of um, a higher level power, so the European court, from what I gather, from what I gather from the European Living Will project, is something that is still far away. The will of the different nations must be respected. The idea the, uh, of an uh, end-of-life law that is the same everywhere is very far away. We've been fighting for the same rights for European citizens because of reasons we all know, because of crossed veto powers. And these are the challenges we've been facing. Lorenzo Mineo and Gabriele Luciano, I want to have Lorenzo Mineo smiling. So I can tell you that we have a availability for organizing the demonstration in Brussels for the European Citizen Assembly. So good to know. So, so now I have to deal with it. Uh, so um, first thing, of course, we can't hide that this is a defeat, the, what happened with the Italian referendum, but this leads us to a lesson that we already know, the fact that Italian democracy is stuck as well as European democracy is stuck. And I think that starting from that lesson, uh, what we need to do now uh, is insist in this uh, deeper transformation of democracy, uh, starting from uh, uh, the European and international level, uh, but also giving strength to initiative we are leading at uh, national level. Uh, Warsaw is the first chance to relaunch uh, this transformation of democracy, because I think the, the um, referendum case is just demonstrating that it's just what we need, something more than using an existing tool. Um, and Warsaw is the first chance uh, to relaunch uh, this challenge. Um, of course, um, I, I, want, I, want, I would like to tell you that yesterday I was in uh, Milan presenting uh, the Warsaw Congress uh, um, in an event organized by uh, Cristiana Zerosi, one of our uh, members. Uh, I had the chance to present humans, uh, uh, the initiative uh, uh, the Ball of Popular, the Bill of Popular Initiative in Italy, Cittadini per il Clima. Um, I had this this opportunity, and I saw that there was a lot of energy and willingness to use the frustration after 
the, the defect of the referendum in a new project, uh, some a project about uh, a new democracy, also new forms of uh, uh, participatory democracy. We never have to forget that democracy is a cocktail. So we have referendums, we have uh, uh, also uh, the, the option of elections that uh, Sibylla was mentioning. We have uh, um, civic disobedience, legal appeals. So these are all instruments I think we should uh, um, still work on. Um, but regarding the uh, electoral option that Sibylla was mentioning, I think that as humans, we should uh, still focus on this non-electoral dimension of uh, popular initiative, then one day we'll see, um, but we have antipodes enough, I think, to consider election just as one of the tool of democracy and not just the reason why we're doing uh, we're doing politics, and this is why I think we should not focus uh, now on election as the answer uh, of the problem we are facing, uh, not only with referendum but in general with European uh, democracy. Uh, we should still insist in the need of more participation, just in the moment when. Uh, national institutions are not allowing citizens' participation. So relaunching uh, the, uh, ob the objective, that is, uh, once again, the objective indicated by citizens, citizens' panel in the Conference on the Future of Europe, so not our objective. Uh, so we have to relaunch this with this demonstration of the 13th of March, and uh, I think this should be the main um, you know the, the main appointment of uh, of humans uh, humans congress uh, one uh, update that i have on this is that uh, vol uh, uh, the um, citizens takeover coalition but also volt the party that was uh, uh, taking part to a meeting yesterday with the citizens takeover they are considering uh, the idea of uh, doing with us this potential uh, uh, this, this demonstration that we will have uh, on the 13th. Uh, so yes, this is the, the update and I think relaunching with new strength on participatory democracy uh, at European level, uh, the, the, our, our objective, uh, it's the thing to do and not now thinking about uh, uh, election or other uh, uh, easier solution. Thank you, Lawrence. And I think the announcement of Volt potentially joining the demonstrations on the 13th of March is important because they have also the capacity of being in other cities. Uh, so we could potentially be in Warsaw, Brussels, Rome, uh, and other places at the same time. And uh, since we don't have much time, let's remember to make sure that we have pictures and visual coverage of uh, the demonstrations that will happen around uh, Italy and Europe, like to make sure that we give visibility to the fact that these are uh, distributed action. I think it's something to keep in mind as we, we build this up. Uh, thank you very much. And also in the chat, there is the text of the open letter uh, that will be delivered uh, to the board of the Conference on the Future of Europe to politically explain this uh, support to the proposal of the citizens of the citizens panel for the permanent European citizen uh, assembly. So Lorenzo worked on that a bit with the help of Sibylla and everyone you can have a look and uh, there is still time to uh, comment, integrate, uh, and then of course be ready to circulate it. Uh, Ines. Grazie, uh, buonasera a tutti. I am uh, good evening. The, what I wanted to say is um, a bit more practical. So, what can we do to bridge uh, what's happening in Italy to like Poland? And I was thinking, if it's about um, courts and uh, constitutional courts, we can like try to bridge those things together somehow. Because of course, like Poland doesn't have the history of the best uh, constitutional uh, court rulings. 
so we can just uh, somehow bridge that in. And also I wanted to uh, talk to everyone about, I've been uh, in contact with Maya Matsurkiewicz. I'm sorry, maybe I'm not pronouncing her name correctly, but she is the co-founder of uh, Alliance for Europe and she is super excited to work with us in for the Congress. And I have a call with her on next Monday to discuss about it. And so um, maybe we can brainstorm some ideas, maybe not in this meeting, but reach out to me, what can we do? Because it is very important to like have concrete actions and have as many Polish activists as we can. Um, and she has many contacts there and she's super happy to, to share it with us. So those are like my two comments. I open to questions. <laughs> Thank you, Ines. This is very important on Monday and maybe if we can attend either Virginia or myself uh, or both, uh, I think is very important to, uh, because now we have 25 days to the Congress. So very, very short time. We have to be very concrete and precise in sending out the, our message, inviting people and involving other organization and networks. So it is very important what you have prepared for Monday. Thank you. Thank you, Ness. Um, on this specific point, I think the, the role of the Constitutional Court is essential. And since you are based in one of the most important theoretical hub, which is the European University Institute, maybe you can put some thoughts if there is someone that is Polish, that is in Poland, since you have the counterpart in Natolin, uh, maybe you can help us to identify someone that can, uh, I know that is the College of Europe, but in any case, uh, European University. So maybe thinking of someone who can help to draw this line during the Congress could be very helpful. Uh, with regards to Maya, I saw that she registered for the, for the Congress. And uh, so like I will be in Warsaw as, for Sunday, I don't know if she's based there, uh, but um, maybe you can have a first chat with her or I can join the meeting, but I'm also physically in Warsaw from Monday on until the Congress. Um, in particular, and this is a reminder for everyone, Alliance for Europe is an organization that we also collaborate on other initiatives such as the EU Sign Day last year, and they're currently pushing for a campaign on the um unanimity within the european council uh, this will not be maybe a topic specifically for the congress however something that we can propose to them given that she is polish and based in poland is that they can bring their campaign into the congress uh, and also maybe invite uh, i don't know the federalist other organizations that have similar goals i mean we are still building we are really building a space for political debate in Warsaw. So let's uh, make sure that we have our political objectives that are very clear, but also this is perceived as a space for exchange among uh, activists. So I think this is another important message to, uh, to bring along. But let me know for the meeting, I'll, uh, I have already some stuff scheduled, but I'll, I'll try to maybe be with you as well uh, there. Um, in general, the invite for everyone. Also, if you have some thoughts, like the one that Ines just had, the constitutional court, the rules, let's produce articles and content uh, uh, for the website. It can be via Human Agora, it can be on the Humans blog, but I think the more content that comes from our voices as activists and our reasons why for being in Warsaw or for believing in what we're trying to do, this is the right moment to make it public can be on our channels or also on your channels explaining why you are coming to work so you are working on this and so forth and so on uh, but as Marco said we don't have much time so everyone is a hub of communication and networks and connections so uh, that's very important uh, Gabriele Luciano and then Andrea Salimbeni yes can, can you hear me yes okay the first thing I want to say is that uh, to me, um, the electoral way, uh, it is uh, a reasonable uh, way, but maybe uh, is not, this is not the moment to do so because it's a big question mark. We didn't really know how to uh, behave in an in a, uh, electoral market uh, when we have only few points and most of them are 
technically against the regular uh, elections. So to me, what should we do, especially with the people that now are asking, uh, what can we do now? Because personally, I received many messages about uh, from uh, activists asking me, uh, what should we do now? We should go and do a strike or something. And to me, the, the, the main, the main um, thing that we should keep in mind is to um, behave in a very uh, democratic way, even if the things that we are going through are not so democratic. So to me, we should address humans as the hub for a new um, form of knowledge and information to, um, to know what are the, the, the ways of the political participation and uh, not the electoral ones. So uh, addressing and inviting people in humans, uh, they are now interested in, uh, in these referendums, but they, um, people that can understand the value of um, the uh, democratic participation. And then they are not only focused on these topics because many activists right now are not only focus on, on the, the topic, but they are interested in uh, the participation to be a part of a community and uh, a society. And, um, and we, um, we all experience that. So we should not uh, waste this opportunity and uh, try to, to invite uh, um, as many as people as we, as we can. And the second thing that I want to say, but um, uh, on this point, I'm not very, um, uh, I'm not very uh, aware of any updates on the program of the Congress. Uh, I think it, it, um, it will be interesting to explore the aspect of um, church influence on politics. Uh, I know this is a very, uh, because to me, to me, Poland is leading uh, this char church um, influence ah, church. Okay. Um, on, on politics, because to me, Poland, for what I know, uh, it's it's in a similar um, position as Italy under the the, the influence of, on the church. And maybe we will think about inviting some um, journalists, reporter that can explore this area. But I know it's a very critical topic because uh, we do not want to burn all the churches. We just want to uh, be aware of what is a like state. Uh, and so, I don't know, I, I, I think that this aspect can, would be interesting to explore it uh, during the Congress, because from um, sexuality to euthanasia and uh, um, anti-prohibitionism, this is um, a sort of uh, under um, a topic that, can, that could uh, contain all these um, topics. Thank you, Gabriele. Just to start to get a sense of where we are going, I'm gonna share an article about this organization called Ordo Iuris, which has an office here in Brussels and is a Catholic driven, legal, independent organization. So I think uh, Polish. So I think it's quite interesting to, to see and learn where we are going and who is acting at a transnational level, but in another way. Um, okay, uh, Andrea Salimbeni and then Arber Daichi. Andrea. Hi, everyone. Um, I would like just to, um, to approach uh, the uh, potential new initiative we can take on this topic, uh, starting from of course, the, the results of the last days. Um, we always say that um, decisions take that politicians take in, in Italy as well as many other countries are a political decision that influenced by electoral goals or by specific party positions. Um, this time about uh, our uh, proposed uh, referendum. Uh, and uh, again, the decision was uh, taken not on the merit of the proposed uh, reform, but uh, on the basis of uh, 
hold uh, party positions with always the uh, thought about next uh, electoral events. Um, and this is, I think it is not new. Uh, it's sad to say, but uh, uh, it is also true that we always say that, and this time was uh, uh, another time that we could uh, just uh, um, take the decision uh, to do something different. So uh, at the same time, we always say that uh, the European Commission and European institutions um, in the development of new regulations and directives, they show to be uh, more science-based decision makers. Uh, probably uh, the European Commission can be uh, our uh, solution. Uh, nowadays, instead of going for uh, policy initiatives country by country, uh, we can um, take the decision to uh, try the European instruments and to try to propose our reforms to the European Commission and in case to the European Union. Uh, I think that uh, uh, being science-based in the decision-making processes, the European Commission can be uh, a more democratic institution than many other national uh, governments like Italy and others like Poland we are going. So uh, it is uh, also true that uh, it is diff difficult to approach and to uh, get results from uh, European citizens' initiatives. Um, we saw how difficult it is to get uh, um, results and consensus, uh, but uh, it is possible, I think, that uh, not only on environment as we did or on uh, human rights, uh, but on the specific topics that we proposed as a referendum in Italy, as for many other topics, uh, we can try uh, uh, creating a network based on specific European citizens' initiative proposals, uh, acting differently uh, than what we did with uh, Stop Global Warming, for example. So uh, before presenting, uh, creating a network, as many old uh, leaders said, uh, you have to create a network and then present the, the European Citizens Initiative. We can start from uh, Warsaw, uh, presenting draft uh, European Citizens Initiative proposals uh, in, in a country where the, uh, uh, the democracy is even worse th than uh, in Italy, we can say, or at least how we feel it. Um, I, I would propose this to be uh, our goal for the next uh, for the next months. So, if we develop potential European citizens' initiative proposals on these topics, which are the topics presented in our referendum, which can be other topics, uh, that could be a starting point to create a network based not on uh, an existing citizens' initiative proposal, but on a potential one where the signatories are, for example, president of NGOs uh, in different countries and where the network, when we will present it, the network will be ready. Of course, it is a uh, time uh, expensive activity, but uh, I think I would say we can try uh, because uh, I don't, trust so much in uh, changing the mind of our politicians. Um, we can uh, do protests. Uh, it is uh, our right to do it, but probably using the instrument that we know at European level, uh, given the fact that in other European countries, there is already uh, legislation on the topics that we, we want to approach, like cannabis legalization, like euthanasia. 
in many countries now we can say there is something that there is not in Italy, there is not in Poland, there is not in other countries. We can count of them on their support to create a network and on the support of other contexts in other countries where these rights are not in place to create a network. And then change the text, develop a European citizens initiative with them, maybe supported by their government. That could be, uh, I think, an opportunity that uh, we must try. Uh, that is just my, my point. And in the debate that we expect to have in Poland, uh, we could start, uh, and I would like this could be uh, a topic, a discussion uh, point to, to approach. Thank you, Andrea. To pick up on your points, and then we have Arber, and then we are closing the meeting, but uh, maybe you weren't here at the beginning. So um, one of the sessions on the Congress is on the cannabis legalization, and it's because we built in the past weeks the network for a European citizen initiative on that. Uh, on Monday, we have a meeting with all the organizations that had been involved, contributed so far. And so most likely we are gonna be ready to launch either to announce the European citizen initiative or even to launch it. And this time we had done the work that it wasn't done with, with Stop Global Warming. So the network is fully aware of the initiative. They had the time to go on the proposal and to define, et cetera. So it's gonna be our first experiment of a differently approached uh, European citizen initiative. So, uh, of course, what you are suggesting should be, and it was always a bit the vision of humans, uh, of like a lot of European citizen initiative on multiple topics. And I think it's worth to use the Congress as an opportunity to work on this methodology, but also learning for what we have done and what we will do. But, uh, and on, on the European Living Will proposal, we are trying to explore with the experts how it can become potentially a European citizen initiative, because of course it always depends on the rules and regulation, but we're doing the same type of work with the different organizations in terms of uh, debating and refining the, uh, the proposal, getting feedback and so forth and so on. So uh, point taken. On the role of science, I just remind that Science for Democracy will have a session during the Congress the sun, Saturday morning on the right to science. And we had a meeting yesterday with the academics of Science for Democracy, which will create the workshop in such a way that it's also an empowerment experience for the participants in the Congress on uh, why open science is a good resource for activism, also to help activists to have uh, evidence-based as policy and scientific evidences as the basis for campaigning. So this is a bit the contribution that right, uh, Science for Democracy will bring uh, to the Congress also for all the participants. Uh, last but not least, Arber Deishi. Okay. Okay. Thank, thank you, Virginia. Thank you. Uh, I'm gonna have my speech in Italian because I couldn't prepare it. So uh, sorry for that, but I want to be precise. So um, I would like to start from the press conference uh, by Amato. Beyond the technical things that were explained in this morning's press conference, I would like to focus uh, on uh, what uh, he wanted to do. He didn't want to explain uh, why he made that decision on referendums. He wanted to discredit, and uh, from my point of view, to scare uh, the activists and the uh, campaigners. It was clear from my perspective because of the offenses towards the organizers and also because of the, the consideration of, the, of this popular initiative. I think that it is really important in this moment that everything that was said in this morning's press conference by Marco, by Filomena, and by all uh, the orders, I'm sorry, 
if I will not uh, tell every name, but I think we should uh, say this everywhere. I am not uh, referring to just them because uh, they cannot be anywhere, but we should use uh, activists and members of humans to uh, participate in any events, in any show. I have followed uh, many lives on Twitch, on Instagram, on social media. And what I saw was that many people were angry uh, especially younger generations, I saw the will to fight. Many of them said clearly that uh, they would like Marco to accept and uh, go talk with them. So I would like to ask if it could be possible to uh, prepare the motivations that we can bring before even towards uh, every activist, because I joined as an activist, I collected the signatures in the charts. Everyone asked, uh, what can we do now? Well, I think this could be helpful in order not to discredit this enormous popular mobility, mobilization to give coverage to people, to let them understand that their organization behind these two referendums will not stop. And we will continue the fight. And this way we will sponsor the Congress in Warsaw. We will try, we could try to participate in online events and the signature collection, the digital signature collection ha have shown a great participation for under 35. I think this is our uh, main target because uh, these people have not much to do with the political parties and also they can uh, change uh, demo some democratic issues that they are not working right now and we can see it uh, because uh, people are not going uh, to vote so this is what i wanted to say i just want to summarize one thing which is that humans has two main goals uh, and it's important to keep this in mind on one side is to use participatory democracy instrument to achieve change and the second one is to reform and strengthen the instruments of participatory democracy, which means how to make sure that we have uh, effective weapons and not stuff that leave us uh, disappointed or sad uh, as we might be right now. So I think also an invite for the people that you are mentioning to join humans, to come to the war, so to, uh, to, to build and continue to build what, what we're trying to do is exactly this. It's like if you believed in democracy and you were disappointed, it's not about giving up, but it's about uniting forces to make it stronger. So I think this is the message that for us as a movement in this moment is very important. It should be one of the messages we use to value what we're trying to do in Warsaw and to fill it with uh, both political meaning, but also meaning for individual citizens who don't want to give up on the fact that there are other ways to take part in politics that is not the election, which doesn't necessarily mean also, to be honest, to sit in parliament, that things happen when you're sitting in parliament. So I think it's a bit early to, to give up on our, our vision and our mission um, as a pop movement of popular initiative. Um, thank you very much for joining tonight. Uh, use these weeks to find ways to communicate your uh, uh, participation in the Humans Congress in Warsaw. Uh, any idea is super more than welcome, uh, but more than ideas, we need actions. And uh, next week we finally speak about the statute. <laughs> we are ready, but we thought tonight was good to have uh, this moment of uh, elaboration. Uh, thank you, everyone, and enjoy thank your you. Thursday. Ciao. Bye. Ciao, grazie. And thanks and to ciao. the interpreters, by the ciao, way. Ciao.